Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. Yang berbahagia, Profesor Insinyur Dr. Biti Hang Tua Baharudin, Timbalan Naib Chancellor Jaringan Industri dan Masyarakat Universiti Putra Malaysia. Yang berbahagia, Profesor Dr. Muhammad Basharudin Abdul Rahman, Dekan Fakulti Sains. Yang berbahagia, Profesor Dr. Zanaria Abdul Majid yang akan menyampaikan syarahan inaugural pada hari ini. Dan juga para penonton yang dihormati sekalian. Selamat datang diucapkan kepada semua yang menonton majlis syarahan inaugural oleh yang berbahagia Profesor Dr. Zanaria Abdul Majid. Untuk makluman semua, majlis syarahan inaugural ini ide adakan secara dalam talian mengikut norma baharu dan juga akan dipancarkan secara langsung di halaman Facebook UPM dan juga halaman Facebook Fakulti Sains. Anda juga amat dialu-alukan untuk menekan butang like dan juga share but, uh, share halaman Facebook tersebut. Bagi memberkati majlis pada hari ini, majlis dengan ini mempersilakan Dr. Hanif Wahid untuk membacakan bacaan doa. Majlis dengan ini mempersilakan. Al-Fatihah. Alhamdulillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirrabbilalamin. Ar-Rahmanirrahim. Maliki yaumitnin. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين يا الله يا تهان كامي تهان يا من واسع اللانج dan bumi hanya kepadamu sahaja kami panjangkan kesyukuran atas segala rahmat dan berkatmu Bersempena dengan majlis pada hari ini kami mohon inayah dan taufikmu Kurniakanlah kesejahteraan dan kebahagiaan serta kesihatan jasmani dan rohani Bukakanlah hati-hati kami, lapangkanlah dada kami untuk menerima ilmu pengetahuan Dan ilhamkanlah kami dengan petunjuk darimu Ya Allah, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim Kami memohon dengan kudrat dan iradahmu Peliharalah kami dari sebarang bahaya dan kemudaratan Penyakit serta masalah yang berat Ya Zal Jalal Wal Ikram Tambahkanlah kepada kami kecintaan kepada segala kebaikan. Jadikanlah kami terus istiqamah, berkhidmat menabur bakti, membangunkan umat, masyarakat bangsa dan agama. Rabbana atina fid dunya hasanah, wa fil akhirati hasanah, wa qina azaban nar. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Amin, amin ya rabbal alamin. Terima kasih atas bacaan doa itu tadi. Para hadirin sekalian, majlis dengan segala hormatnya mempersilakan yang berbahagia Profesor Insinyur Dr. Biti Hang Tua Baharudin untuk mempengerusikan majlis syarahan inaugural ini yang akan disampaikan oleh yang berbahagia Profesor Dr. Zanaria Abdul Majid. Dipersilakan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim uh, Terima kasih uh, saudari uh, pengacara majlis uh, Selamat pagi Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh Kepada yang berbahagia Prof. Dr. Muhammad Basharuddin Abdul Rahman Dekan Fakulti Sains Yang berbahagia Prof. Dr. Zanariah Abdul Majid Uh, Profesor VIP kita pada pagi ini InsyaAllah ya uh, Beliau akan Kita akan mendengar syarahan Nogro beliau uh, Pegawai-pegawai kanan universiti Ahli pengurusan universiti Sidang penonton yang dikasihi sekalian uh, Alhamdulillah uh, Bersyukur kehadir Allah SWT Kerana dengan limpah kurnianya Kita dapat diberi peluang Untuk bersama-sama pada Pagi ini untuk meneruskan martabat kesajanaan ilmu uh, pada pagi Jumaat yang barakah ini. Oleh itu, uh, sempena majlis yang gemilang ini, uh, saya akan memperkenalkan Profesor Dr. Zanariah Abdul Majid dan sedikit latar belakang beliau. Ya. Mohon izinkan saya uh, untuk berbahasa Inggeris kerana teks ucapan yang disediakan dalam bahasa Inggeris. Lah. Uh, Professor Dr. Zanaria uh, Abdul Majid was born on the 26th of March 1964 in Kampung Tualang Alusta Kedah. She is the youngest of three siblings. She received her primary education 
Sekolah Rendah Kebangsaan Ahmad Tajuddin in Jitra and secondary education at Sekolah Menengah Sultan Abdul Halim Jitra Kedah which is also famously known as Sekolah Mak Jenan eh? Sekolah Mak Jenan if I'm not mistaken uh, after obtaining her CJ Pelajaran Malaysia SPM she was awarded a scholarship from the Ministry of Education to pursue her tertiary education in McAllister College Minnesota in 1982. She obtained her bachelor degree in mathematics in 1986. She then continued her Master of Arts in Mathematics at Eastern Michigan University and subsequently obtained a diploma in education in the subject, well, you know, mathematics and science from University Kebangsaan Malaysia in 1990. So in 1990, Prof. Zanaria started her teaching career as a teacher in Sekolah Menengah Raja Ali in Jalan Ipoh, Kuala Lumpur. In the subject, of course, famously, mathematics and additional mathematics. Probably one of my uh, tougher subjects, yeah, Prof. Uh, but one of the you know, most interesting ones. Yeah. And later in 1996, uh, through her excellent service, yeah, Uh, Prof. Zanaria uh, joined Maktab Perguruan Teknik as a lecturer in the Department of Mathematics. Again, here she specialized in the pedagogy of mathematics for teachers. Um, in 1999, um, with a scholarship from, again, the Ministry of Education, she enrolled as a PhD student at here in UPM under the supervision of Prof. Datuk Dr. Muhammad Sulaiman and she was awarded Doctor of Philosophy in Applied Mathematics, specializing in numerical analysis in 2004. Well, um, pepatah Melayu said, you know, uh, apa tu, tak akan tumpah kuah kalau tidak ke mana? Saya lupa dah. Uh, 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 tak akan tumpah kuah ke nasi lah kan? So, dah tanya itulah tumpahnya. <laughs> Lupa. Anyway, um, in 2007, uh, I think she's formed with UPM. So Prof. Zanaria joined UPM as member of staff in the Department of Mathematics, Faculty of Science, as a lecturer. So promoted to associate professor in 2011 and elevated to full professor in 2015. Yeah. Professor Dr. Zanaria was the head of laboratory at the Institute of Mathematical Research in SPAM from June 2012 until November 2017. Presently, she holds the position of Deputy Dean of Research and Postgraduate Studies at the Faculty of Science. A total of five PhD students and 25 master students had graduated under her supervision and she is currently supervising a further six PhD students. Her research interest is in numerical methods, focusing on multi-step and one-step methods for solving first and higher order differential equation. In addition, her research focus on developing new methods and approaches for solving second and third order boundary value problems directly, which involve Dirichlet um, type, I think this is for um, Fourier, uh, Fourier transform, and also Newman type, Robin type, and mixed type. Her research interests also include solving first and higher order delay differential equation for retarded and neutral type problems. She has developed several numerical methods with techniques and algorithm for solving Volterra Integro Differential Equation, Volterra Integral Equation, Fredom Integro Differential Equation, and Fractional Differential Equation. At present, she is working on problem solving Volterra Delay Integro Differential Equation for retarded as well as neutral case. She has published over 150 papers as a main author and co-authors in the area of numerical analysis. 
Professor Zanaria has won several awards and medals, uh, such as, I'm just going to name a few because I was reading before this and there was a long list of this excellent professor. So I'll, to name a few, one is gold medal for the research projects entitled 2PB Software for Solving Non, sorry, for Solving Large Non-Stiff ODEs at the Belgian and International Trade Fair for Technological Innovation, Eureka, in Belgium in 2007. She has won a silver medal at the 36th International Exhibition of Invention, New Technique and Products in Switzerland in 2008, and had won 10 gold medals, 8 silver medals at the UPM Inventions and Innovation between 2003 to 2014. So it's a very long list of achievement of Prof Zanaria. Prof Zanaria is dedicated in ensuring her teaching and supervision are of quality and this is proven where in 2011 uh, she has won an award, namely Anugrah Pensyarah Pilihan at the faculty level, again in 2011, awarded Pingat Emas Anugrah Pengajar Putra for Cluster Science Tulane and Kesihatan, and awarded Fellowship Naib Chancellor in 2011 as a Pemenang Anugrah Pengajar Cemerlang for Cluster Science Tulane and Kesihatan. In November 2019, at the national level, Professor Zanaria has won Hadiah Sanjungan category record chapter for her research invention entitled Higher Order Ordinary Differential Equation. And secondly, Hadiah Sanjungan category makalah entitled One Step Block Method for Solving Third Order Ordinary Differential e Directly. Yeah. Professor Zanaria has vast experience in conducting research in the area of numerical analysis. She has headed 15 research projects and collaborated with other researchers in more than 10 research projects. She has also served as a research grant evaluator, journal papers reviewer for national and international journals, and external reviewer for academic promotions. Currently, she is the editor-in-chief for Malaysian Journal of Mathematical Science and as a section editor for Mathematica, which is the Malaysian Journal of Industrial and Applied Mathematics. She has continuously demonstrated the commitment to her work and willingness to share her knowledge with her students and the mathematics community. It is with my great pleasure to honour and introduce Professor Zanaria Abdul Majid for her inaugural lecture entitled Methods of Numerical Approximation Technique and Algorithm. With that, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Yang berbahagia, Profesor Insinyur Dr. B.T. Hantua bin Baharudin, Timbalan Naib Chancellor Jaringan Industri dan Masyarakat, Universiti Putra Malaysia. Yang berbahagia, Profesor Kemis Dr. Muhammad Basharuddin Abdul Rahman, Dekan Fakulti Sains Universiti Putra Malaysia. Ahli Pengurusan Fakulti Sains, Tuan-Tuan, Puan-Puan, serta semua yang sedang mengikuti siaran langsung secara maya. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah dengan izinnya dapat kita bersama-sama pada hari ini di dalam majlis inaugural yang akan saya sampaikan. Izinkan saya untuk menyampaikan syarahan ini dalam bahasa Inggeris.
The title of my talk today is Methods of Numerical Approximation, Techniques and Algorithms. This is the outline of my presentation today. I start with the introduction, followed by the boundary value problems. Next is the delay differential equations, conclusion and acknowledgement. Numerical analysis. Numerical analysis is a part of mathematics and of course we need to have computer science together in numerical analysis. Without programming, we can proceed in numerical analysis. And also in numerical analysis, we create, analyze, and implement algorithm. So creates, what does it mean creates? It means that in our research, we will develop a new method. The proposed method, of course, we need to analyze and in terms of analyze, it means that we have to check for the stability of that method. Is zero stable? Is it convergent or not? And then we go for the algorithm. And also solving mathematically, mathematical problems numerically. Okay, because numerical analysis is not solving as the exact solution. It will solve numerically. Okay, now, why do we need numerical method? In our research, we will develop many numerical methods. But of course, that numerical method, we need to test and make sure that it works. Okay, the reason is that because there's no analytical solution exists. Some of the problems that deal in the outside world, there's no analytical solution. So that's why we need to go for numerical method. And also, an analytical solution is difficult to obtain. Okay, it's not easy actually. Although we have, um, we can say that it's analytical method. Now, we have analytical method, but yet it's very difficult to solve. Because okay, sometimes that's why numerical method is uh, advantage to be proceed to solve the existing problem. Okay, now we look at this. In our daily life, we encounter problems that need to be analyzed. Just a very simple problem that is around you. Even you can see a cup of coffee. Okay? For example, the process of cooling a cup of coffee, it will need inside a very simple mathematical modeling. That is a Newton cooling. And also, if you look, you can see in the picture, there's uh, problems exist everywhere in the world. It can be can you can see it's earthquake or even a tsunami. Okay, so in mathematics, it is usually impossible to solve exactness. That means exactitude to the real problems. But in mathematics, we can approximate the best, the best and as accurate as it can. So that's why mathematics is very important and it is used to solve the real problem outside there. And many industries have problems which can potentially be formulated and solved using mathematics. And some industries, maybe they are not aware of that, how mathematics can help the industry. And also, we bear in mind, mathematics is connected to all areas and it has no bounds actually. It's just for us to explore it. And I, I quote a word from the Edward David, he the ex-president of Exxon R&D, where he mentioned that too few people recognize that the high technology so celebrated today is essentially a mathematical technology. Okay. Now we look at this. How do we solve the problem? As I mentioned just now, there's a lot of problems outside there. Okay, how do we do that? How the scientists try to do that? Try to solve the problem? Of course, first, they have to uh, problem description. That means they have to identify the variable that involve uh, 
in that problem. For example, you can look at just now the tsunami. What are the parameter that involve? Well, we can see maybe is involved the temperature of the ocean and many more. And then from there, they will develop a mathematical model. From the mathematical model, when it is formed, then of course we need to solve it. Why we need to solve? Because we want the solution. Okay. So the mathematical model is actually another field of study. Okay. So where are we? Okay. Where is my research? Okay. My research is that the third one. We are going to solve the mathematical model. So we're going to develop the best method that can provide the most accurate answer to the scientists. Okay, this is one of the example mathematical modeling. Okay, this is uh, one of the model is in leukemia. Okay, this is a is in a medical research. Okay, you can see that this is a system of two system of first order ODE. Okay, so you can see although it's very simple, some of you might see that this is just a, a ordinary differential equations. But be careful when you look carefully at the first equations, you can see that there's a parameter delay inside t minus twenty. Okay, so we did have a dis discussion among us the numerical analysis where some of the scientists they try to avoid that delay. For them, it's not important. But actually, in that uh, equation itself, the modeling itself, we have to tackle each of the parameter in the modeling. So it's very important. You can look at this. Okay, I tried just to plot here. You can see that uh, there's one graph, the figure where I took the tau. Tau is the delay term, where tau is 20. You can look at the other figure on the right hand side where I took the tau to be zero. That means the delay is zero. So you can you can compare the graph the graph. It's totally different. Uh, this is very important because when the solution is the approximate solution is when we plot is different, that means it can influence the result. Uh, so that's why we have to be careful and we have we have to make sure that we tackle each of the parameter in the modeling. Our goal. So our goal is to design, okay, like I mentioned to you, we're going to design the numerical method and then we're going to analyze the techniques. That means not the method can stand on its own. We need to implement a special techniques, a special approach, implementation, the best that we can. And then from there, we will have built the algorithm and we will get the numerical approximation. This is the research scope just to share with you. So far in our group where I have explored. Okay, so you can see that uh, it's involved uh, quite a, a different types of uh, problems or different types of equations. Okay, for starting from ordinary differential equations until Volterra integral differential equations. So currently, uh, I'm doing the Volterra integral differential equations. But of course, for today, I can't share all of this with you. Okay, I only can share the two equations that uh, I have uh, done the research with my students. That is boundary variable problems and delay differential equations. Okay, numerical methods. There are two types of numerical methods. We have one-step methods and we have multi-step method. What is one-step method? Okay, one, the example is the Euler, Runga Kuta methods. That is one-step method. Multi-step method is the Adams family. That is Adams Morton and Adam Bashford method. That is the family of multi-step method. Okay, now what's the difference actually? When you look carefully for the one-step method, Usually, when we want to compute the current y at the x n plus 1, we only need one point at the previous back value in order to use the formula. That is one-step method. Compared to multi-step method, 
when we want to compute dy at x and plus 1, we will need more than one back values. So that's the difference. In our research, I am more focused to multi-step methods. Okay, so now we go to the boundary value problems. Up to now, I have three PhD students that have graduated doing their research in boundary value problems. So today, I'm going to share uh, their research and my research with all of you. So first, the block method. So for my research, for our research, we propose the block method. Why we propose the block method? As you can see in the block method, it means that in order to compute the approximate solution, it will be more than one point. Currently, if you are aware with the Runga Kuta method and Euler method, it's only move in one step. But in the idea that we have is that where we want it to move more than one step. That means it's going to give to us more than one answer, one approximate solution. So we have developed for two point block, three point blocks, and four point blocks. So therefore, hopefully that our target is that to finish the calculation as fast as it can because it moves in blocks. And you can see in the figure, there's the R there. That R is actually a ratio because we're going to implement the method that we propose in variable step size. Okay, before I proceed, I would like to highlight with you the difference between ordinary differentiate equations and boundary value problems. I know most of you are very familiar with ordinary differentiate equations. You can see in the slide on the left hand side, that is the problem of second order, y double prime. And you can see that the given initial conditions is y and y prime. But now we look at the boundary value problems. It's still a differentiate equation. You can see that it's still a second order differentiate equation, only that now it gives us the boundary conditions. Okay, you look at the first equation in boundary value problems, it gives us y prime at x equals 0 and y prime pi over 2. And you can see that it gives us the condition at the starting and at the end. So that's why it calls a boundary value problems. Okay, compared to, you look at the second one, it gives us the initial conditions at y when x0 and y at x equal 1. So the first type, that is the Newman uh, type for boundary value problems. And the second one is Dirichlet type. So our objective is to construct a code to implement direct methods based on the block method adapted with multiple shooting technique to solve BVPs directly. So BVPs is boundary value problems. In this research, we're going to uh, solve the general second order two point nonlinear, as you can see in equation one. And I would like to share with you the three types of the uh, boundary value problems for the second order. So we have the Richard boundary condition, the first one. Then we have the Newman boundary condition, that is the second one. And also the third one is mixed boundary condition. Well, sometimes researchers like to call it as Robin. Mixed boundary condition or Robin condition. And this is the general third order, nonlinear BVP as equation two. So you can see that there are three types of boundary, type one, type two, and type three. So in our research, we have covered almost all the types under boundary value problems. If you look in the fluid dynamic problem, because our aim is try to solve the existing problem, the real problem, that is a boundary layer nanofluid equations. So you can refer this, this is a model actually. Okay? You can refer to this model 
the source is in Yasin at all 2013. You can you look you can look carefully at the uh, equation itself is involved F triple prime and given boundary condition. This author, if I'm not mistaken, has implement using MATLAB. When they use the available software, they have to reduce the problem into system of three because this is third order. So they have to reduce into system of three. So it will enlarge the system. But in our research, we won't change the problem itself. We will remain using the single third order. This is the second problem that we're going to solve. This is boundary layer nanofluid equation. You can see that it is a system of two. Okay, the first equation is the third order. The second equation is the second order. So for this researcher, when they want to solve and use the available software, they will have to reduce to the system of first order. So here you can see that because the first equation is third order, so it will become a system of three first order. And the next one is uh, second order. That means it will become two system of first order. So all together, they have to uh, reduce. It become five system of first order. So they have to change the model that they have developed. But in our case, we won't change. We will use the model as it is. So that's our target when we want to develop the method. So our algorithm will be a combination of two methods, that is the direct block method for second order and direct block method for third order. And our algorithm also will consist of variable and constant step size strategy. And also we will implement shooting and multiple shooting technique. I will share with you the multiple shooting technique. Okay, first we go to the derivation of the method. So we're going to derive the 2P2B and 2P3B. Okay, so it's very brief. I would like to share with you. So first, the idea is that we are going to integrate equation 1 once and twice because the problem that we're going to solve related to second order. So you can look at the first point, equation 3, and the second point is equation 4. So equation 3 is where we would like to find the formula for the first point. So you can, you can look carefully where we're going to integrate from xn to xn plus 1. And the second point, we're going to integrate from xn to xn plus 2. And then the function f itself in, inside the integration just now, we will replace with the Lagrange interpolation polynomial. Okay, and then we will let the s equal x minus xn plus 1 over h and replace the dx equal h ds. And we will change the r, we will take the r equal 1 because the r equal 1 actually is the ratio when we vary the step size, the r is 1. I will talk with you, uh, explain about this later. So from there, we will obtain the character formula for 2P2. So this is our method. That is equation 5 and equation 6. So we will use this method in the code. Okay, I would like to explain the multiple shooting in terms of the graph. You can see that we have the alpha and beta. Alpha and beta is given in the initial condition, in the problem itself. So we are going to shoot at the target. You can see there's a beta there. That is our target. Okay, we will have the first guessing, y prime. That is the first guessing. And then from the first guessing, we're going to solve reusing the method we propose. And the green color, that is the numerical solution. That's the first attempt. Okay, So you can see that, well, it did not reach the beta. 
it did not reach the target. So therefore, we were we need to find the new gas, and then second attempt still did not reach the target. We continue until the fifth time. You can see that it still did not reach the target. So what will we do? So the maximum is five because it did not reach the target. We will divide the interval into two. So we will have B, A plus B over two as the point in the middle. So now we will have two initial gas. One is at the first point. Another one is at the middle point. So we will have two system, two system of initial conditions that we need to solve. And then you can see that we will start it simultaneously in our code. So our code will solve it simultaneously at these two points. And the green color is the numerical solution for the method. But you can see that it still did not reach the target. But it will continue. Okay? It will continue. But now we have to be careful because we will have extra two stopping criteria here that we need to evaluate to make sure that the result, the approximation that we obtain is very accurate. So we will continue until lastly it will reach the target. So the target that is the condition that need to be fulfilled. So therefore we we are very sure that the approximate solution that we obtain is very accurate. Okay, this is the variable success strategy that we implement in our code, our algorithm. So the LTE is local translation error. It should be less equal to tolerance. TOL is tolerance. If it is achieved, that means if it is successful, so therefore the choices of the step size can be either R equal 1 or R equal 0 0.5. Okay, as I mentioned to you just now, the ratio R is actually related to the H, the step size. So the R equal 1, it means that we're going to remain the, the, the same H as we have used in the previous step. Or when R equals 0 0.5, it means that we are allowed to double the H. So that means we can move faster. So this is the advantage of variable step size strategy. And for case 2, if LTE is greater than tolerance, so it means that our approximate solution need to be improved. So, so from here, we can say that it's a failure step. Okay, When it's a failure step, so therefore we need to half the H. When we half the H, the ratio for the R is 2.0. So this strategy is, we will program it in our code. So algorithm of 2P2B, okay, you can see in step 3 where we have the Y prime. That is the S0, the first initial guess that we need to uh, guess in order to uh, proceed with the uh, code. And then step 6, as you can see, this is multi-step method. Therefore, it can start on its own. So we will uh, use the Euler and modified Euler method in order to proceed okay, in the code. And then in step 9, you can see that we have the predictor and character. That is where our block methods comes in. And then of course, at step 10, there's a choosing of the step size, as I mentioned to you just now. Okay, so you can see in step 11, okay, there's, there's a decision there. If x4 less than b, it means that if the computation for the calculation of the x still did not reach the end point. So therefore, it will go up to step 8 and continue to calculate and give us the approximate solution. But if it reached the end point, then it will go to step 12, where step 12 is the decision, the condition that need to be tested. If it's fulfilled, that means if it's less equal to tolerance, then we are complete. But if it's still greater than tolerance, so that means that we need to find the new guess. 
Uh, so we will use the three step interactive method for the new guest and the process will start again in step 2. So the same also for algorithm of 2P3B. The difference is that in step 9, of course, we will have uh, the method for third order. That's the only difference. And then the stopping criteria is still the same as the 2P2B. Okay, now I would like to share with you the result. Of course, when we develop the algorithm, we need to test with a problem there's an exact solution because we want to know how good is our algorithm from the techniques that we have implemented inside the code itself. Okay, I would like to compare this with BVP4C, that is a MATLAB solver, and also M shoot that is from Mathematica solver. Okay, now you, you can see that the first we will look at the accuracy. M-A-X-E, that is the maximum error. So when we compare the method that we have, 2P3B, compared to the, mat, the solver in MATLAB and Mathematica, we can say that our method able to give more accurate answer compared to those solver. And also you can look at the total function call in the MATLAB solver. For example, at tolerance 10 to minus 2, the first column, tolerance 10 to minus 2, the method that we propose only need 40 total function call compared to MATLAB solver, it needs 400 total function call. So you can see that that's why we need to compare how good is our algorithm. So as you can see, as the tolerance uh, getting smaller at 10 to minus 8, we managed to get 104, but in BVP4C is 3,852. Okay, so we can see that we can really minimize the storage and even the computation is less expensive compared to the existing solver. Okay, so this is the plot just to highlight, to compare with the method that we uh, introduced in the table just now, compare with the method that we propose. Okay, now we're going to solve this problem. The problem that I mentioned just now, the fluid dynamic problem. So, this is the third order problems. So, we will have the initial guess. There will be two solutions. First solution and second solution. So, that is our choosing technique. And this is the result we obtain. And we compare the result in Yasin et al. Where Yasin and all use Maple Solver. And as you can see here, the result that we obtain from the code that we develop is comparable with the DSOF. Only that the method we propose, no need to reduce it to first order equations. That means we did not enlarge the system. But the result, we are able to obtain it comparable. Okay, so that is the shooting method, the plot from uh, the software, but that is the method that we obtain. So you can see that in Maple software, it used RKF, that is Runga Kuta Felbert method. It solved by reducing to first order ODE. It used shooting method, okay? And then constant step size. Compared to the code that we develop, the algorithm that we develop, we use the block method. We solve it directly, and, and we use also multiple shooting and variable step size. Because multiple shooting, actually, it can save the time. Okay? It happens sometimes when you solve the problems, the shooting method, it can go more than 100, more than 200, because it start to shoot, but it did not reach the target. But the method we develop is multiple shooting. We can divide into smaller interval and reach it faster. Okay, so this is another example we solve for the velocity profiles F prime 
and compare our answer with Shruti method that is in Maple. Okay, now the second problem. Okay, so this is a problem in Bacho et al. The author will need to reduce into a system of five first order uh, equations, but in our code, we only will solve two equations. As it is, we did not change. So this is our result. We compare with the uh, result by Bacho, where they're using the Maple Solver, and you can see that the result that we obtain from the code that we develop is comparable with the one from Maple. So what is our contribution? For this research, we have developed block method with variable step size, where we adapted the multiple shooting technique and it is suitable to solve higher order BVP. So there's a comparison between existing method and the block method. Now I continue boundary value problems for the mix and drawing type case. So this is uh, the result from one of my PhD student where she has developed a block method, what we, but we call it as a diagonally multi-step block method because the idea is that uh, previously we developed a block method, but that is fully implicit block method. But now we want even to save in terms of total function call. So that's why we go for diagonally multi-step block method because it can save in terms of total function call. Because the total function call, the calculation, it can affect the timing in the code. In her research, she, she developed for variable step size and constant. Okay, now in question nine, that is the Robin boundary conditions. Okay, so this is the shooting technique that she have, has implemented. So as you can see, the difference is now, of course, when you look at the boundary for the Robin itself, uh, it has two equations. Okay, you can see here. It has C1, C2, C3, C4, and that we really need in the algorithm. So you can see that we will have the guessing for S1, and then we will find the value for Y prime 1. And of course, from there, we will perform using the block method that we developed. And also, of course, there must be a stopping criteria at the end. So you can see that there's an absolute value of G minus the beta. So that beta is from the uh, question itself. Okay. So the iteration will repeat. It will continue until it satisfies the stopping condition. Okay. For this, uh, for this Robin boundary value problem, we use Newton divided difference interpolation technique for to correct to proceed and find the next guessing value compared to my first PhD students where she implement the three-step iterative method. But for my student, for this research, uh, she implement Newton divided difference interpolation technique. Even actually, we also go for Stevenson method because we would like to compare which can give us the best answer. Because to get the initial guessing is very important. We want the most accurate method that can give us the best guessing value because it will influence our result. Okay, to share with you, so this is the nonlinear second order differential equations and you can see that this is from Robin type, Robin or mixed type. Some scientists call it as mixed type. Okay, so of course we use uh, where it has exact solution because we want to see how good is the algorithm that we have developed. Okay, you can see in the table, the one on the left we solve using variable step, step size and the one on the right we use constant step size. Just to highlight here the advantage of using variable step size compared to the constant step size. Okay, you can see 
for the constant step size, the 2PDD4, where when it used H, the step size H, 0 0.1, the maximum error is at 10 to the minus 7, and the function evaluation is 120. Compared to the method that we developed, 2PDVS, that is variable step size, at 10 to the minus 2, we, we also able to achieve maximum error 10 to the minus 7, but you can look at the total function core is only 81. So we can see that it is less expensive compared to the method they implement in constant step size. Okay, now we try for solving non-linear physical application. So this is related to diffusion application. Okay, you can see the, descri the description in the table itself. Okay, so this is actually the Robin boundary condition and we try to solve. So this problem we took from the, there's a reference there and we try to solve and we plot Okay, so you can see that we use different value of n. N, it means that we try to reduce the h. That means we use to from the n equal 10, that means h is 0 0.1, and then to the smaller h to see the result. Okay, now we go for next problem. Third order nonlinear differential equations. Uh, this is very special actually because we solve the multi point Robin boundary conditions. It's quite tough for us in the code when we want to uh, choose the techniques and the algorithm that we develop. Okay, we would like to share with you the answer. We compare with uh, Runga Kuta Felbert that is in Maple, the result that we obtain from our code. So you can see that it mesh and it's comparable with the result that obtained in MAPLE. Another application problem, steady state oxygen diffusion in spherical cell. So you can see that uh, the boundary condition, uh, this one is mixed. Okay, you can see that there's two boundary condition, but one is Newman, the first one is Newman, the second one is Robin. So therefore, you can see that we need to combine in our code the techniques in order to solve the mixed boundary condition. So this is the result we obtain. You can see that there's no exact solution. Okay, so uh, we compare our answer uh, from the uh, paper itself where it has solved uh, using CFDM method and the B spine method. So the one on the left hand side, the first column, that is the method that we propose. Uh, so you can see that the method we, uh, the, the numerical solution that you obtain, it comparable and it match well with the um, method that has been proposed in the literature. So we plot this and you can see that uh, the the sketch or the plot of the figure, it mesh well with the existing method. Uh, so we can see that the method we, we propose is, can be accepted and it can be used for the problem of the mixed boundary condition. So the contribution I have shared with you, the method the algorithm that we propose to solve directly the two-point and multi-point third order BBP subject to Robin boundary conditions. And also we have implement the shooting technique where inside it is the Newton divided difference interpolation method. And the two strategies that we implement is constant and variable step size. Now we go for delay differential equations. I'm not sure how many of you have, have heard of delay differential equations. Okay, now we look here, delay differential equations, there are two types of delay. We have retarded delay and we have neutral delay. So what's the difference between these two delay? 
Okay. So delay, you can see that for the retarded delay, we have the Y prime on the right hand side, but there's no Y prime on the. We have one prime on the left hand side, but we don't have Y prime on the right hand side. Compared to the neutral delay differentiate equations, we have the Y prime on the left hand side, but there's another Y prime on the right hand side. So that's that's the difference between retarded and neutral delay. And you can see there's a tau. Okay, you can see there's a tau for retarded delay. Uh, that is the tau we have to treat it well. Okay, we have to really careful to treat and find the position of that delay in our code. And that neutral delay, you can see that there are two delay. One is the delay at y, another delay is at the y prime. So sometimes scientists call this as multiple delay. Okay, for retarded delay differentiate questions, okay, I would like to share with you there are uh, different types of delay that might occur in the RDDE. It can be constant delay, where the tau is constant, like the one that I showed to you, solving the medical research related to leukemia. And that is a delay that is a constant. And then we also have variable or time-dependent delay case. And also we have state-dependent delay case. What is the numerical difficulty? Okay, for non-vanishing delay, usually, usually the delay values, it will fall in the previous time step. Okay, so for, for example, currently we are using our method, we are trying to find the Y. For example, at x n plus 1. But when we, in our calculation, the delay exists in the previous step. So we need to find where is the location of that delay. And also, the vanishing delay. Okay, the vanishing delay is where the delay are so small that the step size is and it can cause where it can lies in between the interval. For example, currently you are using your method to compute the y at x n plus 1. But at the same time, you, you check and you look at the delay. It is also in the current step. Uh, that is another uh, situation that we need to solve. So we have to use uh, techniques here. Okay, so before that, we go for the three-point multi-step block method, where for this, for my student, she has proposed the three-point multi-step block method, but uh, of course you can see that it will have three formula that we have to develop. So that's why you can see that we will integrate from xn to xn plus 1. That is for the first formula. And then xn plus 1 to xn plus 2. That is for the second formula. And the next one is xn plus 2 to xn plus 3. And the special of this method, what she has proposed is that she consider the method is in block. But we consider the closest point in the block. So the method she proposed is um, slightly uh, different from, from my previous student because she considered the closest point in the block. Okay, so she considered here for predictor there are four points and character there are five points here that she considered. And the step test ratio is R equal 1. She evaluate using maple. And she obtained, this is the result for the character formula. So you can see that we will have three formula because this is a three-point block method. Okay, I just would like to share with you how we implement the delay. Actually, we, we program this in our code. Okay, for example, while we are calculating the x4, that means currently we want to find the y 
at x4 and the delay is at alpha 4. So what can we do? Okay, first, we need to identify the closest point to that delay, the alpha 4. Because we will use the Lagrange to interpolate and find the y at alpha 4. Because we need to, to use that y in our calculation. Okay. So here you can see that the, the point, you can see the blue point on the left of alpha 4. That one actually we didn't have. We didn't, we didn't calculate yet. If using the previous method, they will have difficulty to find that point. But for the block method, because we have the predictor value, so that's why we can use the value at the x4. Okay, so therefore we can proceed with the Lagrange. And then proceed with the character. Okay, now next. What happened now if the delay is actually at the x at the uh, x4 itself, the alpha 4 there. Okay, you can see. Okay, so this is another advantage because our block method, we have the predictor yp4. That is the formula of the predictor formula. So therefore, we can use that formula to find the y at s4 4, 4 s3. Okay, and then we continue using the character formula. Okay, next, what happened if our delay is far, far away from the calculation? That means currently we are calculate the x4, but the delay is far away to the uh, left-hand side of the interval. So as usual, we will identify the closest point. That means in our program, we need to a uh, store we we must have a a big storage okay uh, so therefore we will identify the points and then we will use lagrange interpolation to find the y for the uh, delay at alpha 1 okay so this is notation that uh, i'm going to show to you next uh, notation we use in the uh, when we solve the problem okay this is what our interest when you look at this, the method that we're going to compare, this is the existing method that has solved the problem. You can see that most of the method is one-step method. It's a Runga Kuta method. None of the, none of, uh, the researcher has tried to develop a multi-step method to solve the problem. Okay, so that is our main attention actually. And not even block method has been implemented to solve the problem. So this is problem, one problem that I would like to share with you. This is the vanishing lag at x equal 1. Okay, so you can see very clear the method that we propose, 3PVS, is much better compared to the existing method. Maybe this is much better is clear so we show we compare the our method 3pvs compared to the existing method so you can see that this is variable step size so you can see the tolerance from 10 minus 4 until 10 to the minus 12 and you can see very clear where our method although it is in block it is three point block but we are able to save the total function call uh, for example, at 10 to the minus 12, we achieve the, the total function call is 1,634. Compared to the other method, for example, DDESD, it needs 22,527 total function call in order to solve the same problem. Okay, now problem 8 to share with you. Is a state-dependent depend, delay with vanishing lag at x equal 1. Okay, so we solve the problem. So you can see very clear that the method that we develop able to uh, obtain much better accuracy and less total function call compared to the other method. Okay, so this is in table. So you can see also very clear where 
in terms of total function call we save a lot of uh, a lot of calculation because function call actually is involved the calculation if we have more total function call it means that the the code is very heavy it's very heavy you need to calculate a lot okay so compared to the method here you can see that if we have less total function call that mean it's better now we go to pentograph type NDDE. So NDDE is neutral delay differentiate equations. Okay, what's the difference now? Previously, uh, I introduced with you the constant delay, the time dependent delay. Now come the pantograph delay. If you look in the equations, you can see there's a Q there. Okay, we have AYT plus BYQT. Okay, so that Q that is the delay actually and that q it will be between 0 and 1 the value of q is between 0 and 1 and usually the pantograph delay is mostly exists in neutral delay okay so if you look in this equation we have y prime on the left hand side and we have another y prime on the right hand side so this is neutral delay Okay, so this is the algorithm that we have uh, developed with several techniques inside. Okay, first you can look at the step three where we need to carefully tackle the delay term. First, in the code, we need to check where is the location of the delay. If we identify that the delay is exactly on the previous solution so therefore we will use the initial solution that means the solution that we have stored okay but yet the program has to start from the very beginning to check the location of the delay until it has identified and then it will take the uh, from the solution itself that we have stored in step four if you look, if the delay, the Q, does not fall on any previous computer solution, that means it did not fall in any of the solution, the approximate solution that we have stored. So what can we do? So here, again, we will use the Lagrange interpolation polynomial because we have to calculate. We still did not have the value, but we store the the value that we have, then it should be for no problem for us in the program. Next, if you can see in step five, of course, this is a multi-step method. We need, uh, we use, usually we use Euler or Runga Kuta method, okay, as a starting value. But you can see that when the first time we start, we, we have to start with the backward divided difference. Okay, because of we don't have enough point because that is at the very beginning of the code. And then in step six, well, we continue uh, implement using the method that we propose. This is a method proposed by my, my master student. This is the hybrid, hybrid block method. Okay, then you can see that after calculate using the hybrid block method, we use the forward divided difference to find the y prime. Okay? And then, of course, in the next step is the usual calculation. We, count, we calculate for the maximum, the average error, the total step, and even we, we uh, take for the timing. Okay, so this is one of the results that I would like to share with you. This is the pantograph delay. You can see that there's in the bracket, okay, the row for for uh, you can see that the pantograph the Q just now is four over five, okay. Uh, that's the delay actually. If you are not familiar with the delay equation, sometimes we might make mistake. We, we don't realize that there's a delay in that equation, and this equation related to when the it related to the cell death rate. 
Okay, so this is one of the problem, but it has exact solution because, as I mentioned just now, we need to have problems with exact solution because we want to know how good the performance of the algorithm that we develop. Okay, you can see here, there are two methods that actually we propose. One is the hybrid, another one is the explicit block method. Okay, so you can see the in terms of maximum error, it's very good. It's very good for both method compared to the existing method. Even Runga Kuta Order 4, that is RK4, still have a larger maximum error compared to the one that we propose. But the one that really um, interests us when we propose this method is that you can see that the 2PE, that is two-point block method, but that is two-point block of explicit method. Because all this while, we have never tried the explicit method uh, to give us the approximate solution. But for this particular problem, that is neutral delay differentiate question for pantograph delay, you can see that actually the explicit, it can give even a faster result compared to the hybrid. Okay, you can see in terms of timing, is even lesser. So in this research, we have shown the numerical solution of DDE with initial conditions for different types of delay using multi-step block method. And also you can see that the proposed numerical methods are capable to obtain excellent accuracy for numerical approximation when solving the DDE problems. Okay, so now we go for the delay differential equations with boundary conditions. Okay, because delay differential equation just now we discussed related to initial conditions, now it is boundary condition. So motivation of this study, when we look at the problem, well, sometimes scientists, they call it as BVP for DDE. Okay, and sometimes we call it as DDE with body conditions. But actually, it's the same problems. When we go through the research, we found out that there's no, there's none. Nobody has uh, used multi-step block method to solve the BVP for DDE. So why not? Okay, why not? we propose a direct multi-step block method in the form of predictor character to solve the second order DDE with boundary condition. Okay, for this problem, it will be a higher order problem. Okay, so you can look here. We have the second order delay differentiate questions. There's a Y double prime there. And you can see on the left, on the right hand side, we have two uh, delay term, one is at Y, another one is at Y prime. And this, you can see that the boundary condition, this is the Dirichlet type because we have the YA is alpha, YB is beta. Okay, so next also, we're going to look at the, uh, this Y double prime, there's a pantograph delay inside it. Okay, so we're going to share with you also the implementation. Okay, so this is the character formula that has been proposed in our research. So the derivation is similar as the one that we have discussed just now, just to show uh, to you the two PBM4 that we have developed to solve the delay with boundary condition. So this is the technique what we have used in the code in the algorithm. So you can see that we start with the Euler, okay, similar as the previous calculation, and followed by modified Euler. And then we need to identify the value of delay. Of course, the location, the position of the delay is very important. So along the, along the, the interval, we need to identify. And if the delay is less than initial x, so we will use the initial function. Okay, usually in the question, it will give us the initial function. 
So if the delay is less than initial x, we use the initial function. Or else, if the delay is greater than the initial x, we will use the Lagrange interpolation polynomial. For the Pontagraph delay, we will use the previous delay solution if it is a constant delay. And then for this uh, program, uh, our research, we did not implement multiple shooting. We just go for shooting, that means shooting technique, that is a, only a simple shooting. We call it as a simple shooting. Okay, so I would like to share with you the problem that we have solved. This is retarded nonlinear DDE of pantograph delay. This is a second order uh, problem. So you can see that the delay on the right hand side. Okay, usually for this type of problem, when we want to solve in the available software, they will reduce and become the system of two equations. But for the method we propose, we no need to reduce. We will use exactly the problem as it is. So that's an exact solution just to make sure that the techniques and algorithm that we develop is suitable and able to give us a very accurate answer. So now you can have a look here. On the left hand side is 2PBM4 and the right hand side is we use we solve using RK4, the result from RK4. And you can see that the edge, okay, the step size getting smaller. The result that we obtain from the method we propose is much better compared to RK4. Okay, another thing, you might be wonder why I, I compare with RK4. Because Runga Kuta Order 4, RK4 is the most established method. So that's why we will compare the result we obtain with RK4. And then you can have a look in terms of the total function call. I would like to emphasize in total function call. Okay, you can see that at age 0 0.1, when the age 0 0.1, the method we propose, only the total function call is 19. Compared to Runga Kuta order 4, when the age is 0 0.1, the total function call is 81. Okay, so it is much larger compared to the method that we propose. This another problem, singular perturbation DDE of constant delay. There's no exact solution. So that's why when we test our problem, we need to use the problem that has the exact solution. Then we are very confident when we test for the real problem. Okay, as we know real problem, there's no exact solution. Okay, so we believe that we can be able to uh, get the, the most accurate answer. Okay, so this is our result. We can't compare with anybody because there's no exact solution. But this is the result that we obtain. But the same problem has been solved in one of the paper. Uh, that is in 2017 by Chala and Reddy. 2017, they have solved. So, what we obtain, we solve the problem and we plot. Okay, because they did not provide us their answer. So, we plot and we can see that the plot that we obtain, it's matched well with the figure in that article. So, contribution for this research we have shown the numerical solution of DDE with bond recognition for second order DDE of constant type, pentograph type, using the multi-step block method. And the proposed numerical method are capable to obtain reliable numerical approximation for solving the BVP and DDE problems. Currently, my team we are in the process of de developing the web portal where you can see that throughout my lecture just now, actually there's a lot of 
algorithm that we have developed. Okay, so we our attention is now to develop a web portal. We have start, and we have already developed for the higher order IVP, and the portal that we develop able to solve second able to solve first order ODE up to six order ODE. And the method, our method, when solve the higher order ODE, it's directly. Okay, so because all this while, where researcher they use the available software, for example, they have problem of why fourth prime. When they use the available software, they need to reduce become the system of four. But the web portal that we develop. You no need to reduce to first order ODE. You can directly key in the problem as it is. So this is one example. Why fourth prime? So you can key in. Okay, there's a, of course there's an instruction in the web portal. You key in, and then you press the button there, and the web portal can give you the answer on the left hand side, and it even can. Plot for you, and you even can download and save the file. So, conclusion from my talk today. So, the in, in the inaugural lecture highlights the performance of numerical methods developed to compute numerical approximation solution to mathematical problems, which have always been an important part of mathematics. So it is important for us to study the different techniques, the different approach, the different implementation, in order to obtain better accuracy of the numerical approximation. So now come to my acknowledgement. I would like to thank University Putra Malaysia for giving me the career opportunity and chance to contribute my knowledge and experience to students, lecturers, teachers, and com communities through my academic and research activities over the last 30 years. My sincere appreciation to my PhD supervisor and mentor, Datuk Dr. Muhammad Sulaiman, for giving me the opportunity to work under his supervision. I also wish to express my sincere appreciation to the management and staff of University Putra Malaysia, in particular to those from the Faculty of Science and Institute for Mathematical Research, who have been supportive of my career in many ways. I would like to thank University Putra Malaysia and Ministry of Higher Education for funding my research, which enabled me to pursue my research interests. My utmost appreciation goes to my late mother, Allah, Allah Yarahmah Hajah Cik Rodia, Binti Abdullah, and my father, Haji Abdul Majid bin Ismail, my brother, Nazri, my late brother, Allah Yaham Mazalan, and their families for their prayers and love. My heartfelt thanks and gratitude go to my beloved husband, Muhammad Rushdi. You have been everything to me, a husband, partner, advisor, and inspiration throughout my journey. My beautiful children, Farah Wahida, Nadia Diana, Muhammad Faris, Emilia Liana, and also to my son-in-law, Yasin. Thank you all for the endless love, support, and constant prayers. 
a big thank you to all my students who have worked by my side consistently for all the good and challenging times we spent together and especially for the opportunities of learning together with you. All the research work as well as the publication of articles would not have been possible without your continuous hard work, commitment, and most of all, sincerity. Thank you very much, and may God bless you always. Many beautiful, many beautiful things cannot be seen or touched. They are felt within the heart. For all who have touched my life, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. There's a special video dedicated to all of you. Thank you.
thank you. Um, thank you, Professor Dr. Zanaria. As uh, you, you have seen the videos, you have touched uh, so many people with so beautiful things. Yeah? And I can see all these beautiful smiles and faces and the achievement that you have made over the past of your careers. Um, as you went through the speech earlier, um, as an engineer myself, um, partially I understood what uh, you have presented, but I'm sure the mathematicians out there in the fraternity, um, I think these are all very beautiful sounds and all these differential equations and methods to solve are beautiful things to them. Um, with that note, once again, I would like to congratulate and thank you, Professor Dr. Zanari Abdul Majid, for your inaugural speech. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Majlis merakamkan jutaan terima kasih kepada yang berbahagia Profesor Insinyur Dr. B.T. Hang Tua Baharudin atas kesudian mempengerusikan majlis inaugural pada hari ini. Majlis juga turut merakamkan jutaan terima kasih kepada yang berbahagia Profesor Dr. Zanaria Abdul Majid atas perkongsian syarahan inaugural yang menarik pada hari ini. Semoga ianya dapat memberi manfaat buat semua. Para sidang penonton, maka dengan ini berakhirlah sudah majlis syarahan inaugural. Ya, sekali lagi, majlis merakamkan ucapan terima kasih di atas kesudian anda semua yang mengikutinya secara dalam talian. Sehingga kita berjumpa lagi di masa akan datang, insya Allah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan salam sejahtera. Stay safe, stay healthy, kita jaga kita.